Okay, today I'm going to run you through the build process for the £50 eBay gimbal stabiliser for GoPro. Um, if you don't recognise the bits that I've got here on the table, um, if you jump back a video, uh, I'll run you through all these bits, what they are, how much they cost, where to get them from, and you can go ahead and just kind of source them for probably between £30 and £50. Um, you can get them from, from most places. I, I, I'll give you links to everywhere you can get the bits from. Um, I'm just going to quickly run you through what I've done to get my build together for the uh, for the gimbal rig. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but just in case you wanted to build your one in a similar way to mine, uh, I'll run you through now just what I've done. So the only bit you'll actually need any any tools for is just to slightly modify this top of the, um, the gimbal plate. So what you have to do is just kind of push these grommets through the um, through the plate, and then you can just release this back plate. So you can see here where it's just kind of a bit rough and scratched that I've um, I've just kind of taken the hole that's in the middle. And I've just enlarged it slightly. Uh, and the way I did it, because it's, uh, it's quite a soft, kind of flimsy plate, so uh, the way I did it was I just used a manual drill and I probably stepped it up kind of three or four times in size. Um, just each time, just checking with what you want is this hot shoe adapter that we've got. Uh, you just need to be able to either feed that straight through or be able to just kind of screw this into the plate. Uh, so that's just the end result you want, really. I mean, try not to. You can use a you can use a power drill or anything, but just try not to break these two edges of the plate, or you know, it's gonna it's gonna start to be a bit flimsy and wobbly. So you you really just want it to all be in, intact by the end of it. Um, so once you've done the hole, you just thread this part through while the uh, well, the back plate is still off. There's quite a few bits you'll probably want to do while the back plate is still off. Um, otherwise, you start screwing bits together. This part will start to kind of counter sink itself. And the last thing you want is for this to start coming in and crushing the actual board. So if you just kind of get this together and then take the, take the adapter we've got. I think this part one. You'll notice the adapter probably won't go right down, so just take the adapter as far as it'll go. There we go. And then just make sure that's all really tight on the back and you're not gonna it's not gonna come apart. Um Usually, what I would do, uh, I would use a few of these uh, these washers. They're just M6 washers. Again, in the last video, you you can buy them from anywhere. You can buy them from a hardware shop or just anywhere really. They're um, they're just standard steel washers. They're quite useful for for tightening these bits up if they're not, um, you know, if they're starting to turn or anything. That's actually quite quite tight and secure on there at the moment. But if it's starting to turn and bits aren't going together properly, use a couple of washers and they're usually perfect to kind of tighten everything up. Um, the next bit you want to do, while well, the plate's still off, um, is to just try and get this battery on because if you try and do it while it's back on again, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're rubbing the, um, rubbing the Velcro across the board of the, uh, the actual gimbal and you, ju you just want to try and not really to touch that at all. So kind of get this across. Again, this is just a cheap Velcro strap. I would probably probably put a few of these on if um, if I was going to go out and actually try and film anything because you can see it's a little bit wobbly but it's that's going to hold it on. It's, you know, the aim of it is just so it's, it's not actually going to fall off. So that's kind of fine. Um, this next bit is a little bit fiddly. What we want to do is obviously get the plate back on and these grommets can be a little bit of a pain. So you just have to kind of pinch them together. Eventually they will go back through. Again, just try and not to touch the board. 
should get up to the way. Okay, so we've got one together there. Um, and then you can kind of just go at opposite ends, so I'll, I'll just put two of them back together and then you don't have to sit and watch me all day trying to put these grommets back into the gimbal. There we go, we've got two in. So the plate's back on and we've got our bits that we need. So we've got enough distance here for the battery to sit nicely um, and we're kind of ready to start putting the camera in. So with the actual gimbal, one thing that's important, you need to take the take the GoPro, obviously put it into this part and it goes over the lens, and that's how it straps in. But try and keep it as flush to here as you can. Otherwise, when you're at certain angles in the gimbal, it will kind of struggle because the weight is not adjusted into the edge and it will kind of sort of struggle knowing what's going on and it will start to judder and then you know your parts of your film will it will just turn out badly and you'll be editing between sort of lots of bad bits um, this part here is just a UV cover you don't need to use that but I like to put it on there to protect the lens as one and also it's quite tight on there so um, it's quite nice just for securing the GoPro a little bit extra rather than just having a velcro strap and then we're kind of all together and so all I've got um, obviously this is built to take a, a standard tripod screw now so we can put anything into it so what I've done in the DIY tutorial was I just put in you can see there so that's not going on very tightly onto there so I can use a couple of washers in that part just to tighten that up just slightly. Um, yeah, so what I'm using here is not the best piece of equipment really. It's kind of the cheapest of the cheap sort of monopod. Uh, they cost about, I think it's for six pounds. <laughs> so, you know, it's not, it's not an amazing piece of equipment. It's probably not the best thing to be dangling your... Um, your GoPro off of, but it's it's worked fine. I've never had any problems with it. So okay, so once this is together, all you need to do is actually plug the battery together. That's it. That way around. Put it together. We should get the green light to tell us that it's working. And I want to move my hand out of the way. There we go. And that's it. We've got the got the GoPro as we want it and that's what you don't want this kind of this kind of judder so if you're going too far up into one edge it'll judder so you just have to kind of keep it smooth on the edges you can kind of you can move the uh, you can move the monopod slightly and just kind of try and keep it within its axis but it's um yeah it's not a bad little tool to sort of get a bit of stabilized fishes together. Um, what I'll probably do is um, show you the kind of benefits of this on some uh, on some different rigs because the the monopod one is slightly um, slightly restrictive in the way you can use it but it's it's still quite useful for certain shots you can sort of do running pans and things like that with it. There's a little bit of um, a little bit of quick test footage that I've done that's out there on YouTube so you can check that out if you want to Kind of see what it's like before spending the effort on building it but as you can see it's a very quick it's a very quick build i mean with the drilling part it's only about an extra 10-15 minutes so i think it's quite a worthwhile build for like the result that you get out of it but, um yeah thanks for watching i'll um i'll do some more kind of uh, configurations of this with um different mounts and different stabilizers